Revelation 2, verse 12. Um, was looking at this the other day. It caught my attention. I mentioned it uh, last Sunday. And, of course, the question came up. I, I mentioned that I believe in haunted houses. Um, I believe that devils do live they have habitations uh, earthly habitations that they dwell in areas where they like to congregate birds of a feather flock together in other words um, I mentioned the old druids they would go out into the woods and do their thing some other mystery cults used to gather in caves and, uh, or any place underground, because that's what it represented. It represented any, anything underground in the Bible, sort of as like a picture of hell or the grave, a tomb, a cave, a pit, a ditch in the Bible. They rep anything low, a valley, represents hell. Um, a mountain represents heaven, things like that in the Bible. And... Um, so I thought I would deal with this a little bit. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 12, Unto the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And we're going to study that today. And thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr. Who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Now we like to sometimes picture Satan in hell. That's where some people have him. He's not there yet. He's going to be. He's going to be put into the pit. When Christ comes for a thousand years he's going to fall. That's a long fall. That is a long fall. It's like. Falling out of an airplane, if you scream on your way down, ah! at some point you'll have to go, ah! you have to catch your breath to scream more. Uh, but he's going to fall for a thing, he's going to be in the pit for a thousand years. But right at this time, he's dwelling in Pergamos. And it, we know that there was a pagan temple there by the way Hitler Adolf Hitler had that the remnants of that brought to Germany and rebuilt there in a museum does that make sense to you where Satan's the temple where Satan's seed is Hitler brought it to Germany brought it to Berlin and had it put there that kind of makes sense to me yes Oh, yeah. Yeah, when Obama accepted, I think it was when he gave his speech at the DNC, his second term, they designed the stage to look like that temple. And we're going, that makes a lot of sense. I remember that. I appreciate you bringing that up. But it says where Satan dwelleth, and it mentions Satan's seat. So uh, turn to Isaiah. These are the... Some of the things I didn't, I couldn't remember these last Sunday. Um, but somebody had asked, you know, do I really believe that houses can be haunted? And I said, yeah. And I have the scripture. I went to uh, Revelation 18 because it mentions that Babylon is a place where devils live. And um, there is a, um, a Broadway play called the bird cage you ever seen it they made a movie about it what's it about does anybody know i've never seen it yeah makes sense because they got the title the bird cage from revelation 18 babylon is a cage for every hateful and unclean bird da, da, da. makes sense so isaiah 13 this also is a prophecy of Babylon, and it says in verse 22, 
that the wild beasts, meaning I believe spirits or devils, wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses. The houses are desolate because the man has left. Think of, I mentioned this, think of old houses where nobody lives, nobody's lived there for 50 years. It's falling in, it's decaying, it's rotting. And you'll find all manner of creatures living inside that house that a man built. Well, think of a person's life. A house that has been swept and garnished because a spirit is left and yet the spirit comes back with seven other spirits worse than him. And they dwell in that house. Um, think of a family, a literal home, where the people of that family, they choose not to follow Jesus Christ, they choose to follow some other religion, usually in that religion it will put them in direct contact with devils. I mentioned the Lutz family that lived in the Amityville house. They were invited in. First of all, I think by the murders that went on there. Secondly, by the Lutz family themselves. I think they were invited in. They were brought into that house. Um, think of a church. A church that abandons the word of God. They've walked away from it. They've pushed it out. Several years ago, we had a family that had been following us online. He was a good man, him and his family. And they were going to an Assembly of God church over in Illinois. And he just came in, he told me there was problems going on with him and his church. And he just showed up one Sunday. And I prayed with him and talked to him about it. And he said he was like the youth minister over there. He wasn't, wasn't a full-time position. But the... Uh, he had a class on Wednesday night and he was teaching those kids about the King James. Well, somebody complained to the pastor. Pastor had a talk with him. So the next Wednesday night, the youth pastor is sitting at, in the classroom before anybody comes and he's got his King James out and the pastor came in to see what he was doing and he had his Bible out there and the pastor came in and said, I thought I told you not to use that book here ever again. Those words. And he said, well, this is the book that I believe in. This is the book that I stand by. And the pastor said, well, we'll see about that. And they had a meeting on him and they put him out. And he showed up here that Sunday and we prayed for him and everything like that. But he put him out of the church for using this Bible. Yeah, put him out. So, they took this Bible and tossed it out of the church. There's a vacuum now. There's an empty space. And because Christ isn't there, the dragons, the dragons will move in. Look what it says. The wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces. What is a palace? A palace. The house where the king lives. And her time is near to come and her day shall not be prolonged. Isaiah 34, look there. Verse 11. Anytime you have birds in the Bible, think, think of the angelic realm, either good or bad. Okay? Um, the Holy Spirit is seen as a dove. You have ravens in the Bible, you have meat eaters, uh, so on, flesh, carnal, carnal type birds. Verse 11, but the cormorant and the bittern, which is a tern, shall possess it. Means they're going to take it over, they're going to own it. And the owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it in the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So think about that. Think about, think of in terms of a church now where the Bible has been tossed out. Is there emptiness in that church? Is there confusion in that church? You betcha. In multiple 
forms. It's gonna, house is going to be full of confusion. In fact, it's going to have... I, read, I think I read this last Sunday in Job 10, verse 22, a land of darkness as darkness itself and the shadow of death without any order. The word for that is chaos. There's no order. God's, God's presence taken out of that place. And I've, I've seen church services where they called it, it's pandemonium. You know where that word comes from? Dave, you know where the word pandemonium comes from? Panic and pandemonium have one thing in common. Pan, who was a devil. He was this, a satyr or a satyr. That's what he was. Half beast, half human. That's where they get it from. Pandemonium or panic comes from pan. Uh, let's see, Hill. You stretch, stretch out the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. Verse 12, they shall call the nobles thereof to the kingdom, but none shall be there. And all her princes, these are principalities, shall be nothing and thorns shall come up in her palaces. Thorns represent sin. Nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. And out, it shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. And these all represent spirits, devils. Uh, there was a guy, and I've got his books. He started researching people who said that they had encounters with UFOs and with these alien creature things. And he started noticing that oftentimes the people in these encounters would literally see owls at their house or outside or whatever. They would see them everywhere. Um, there was a movie made based upon that called The Fourth Kind. And it was named after the way they categorize UFO encounters. A close encounter of the third kind is human to alien contact. A close encounter of the fourth kind is an, is an alien abduction of a human. And this psychotherapist or whatever was doing regressions on these people who said they'd been, they didn't know something was going on and they weren't sure, but they kept seeing owls everywhere. And then they realized that the image of the owl was superimposed over what they perceived was the alien face. And these aliens are devils. But that's what they kept seeing. They kept seeing owls everywhere. Uh, and owls represent devils. They would be a court for owls. Verse 14, the wild beast of the desert shall also meet with the wild beast of the island. And the satyr, there it is. Half human, half beast. Um, the word is used... The Hebrew word is used in another place in the Bible. I can't remember where, but it, the translators translated it literally devils in that passage. So that's who we're dealing with. We're dealing with devils. Shall cry to his fellow and the screech owl also shall rest there. Now, if, if you were to go out and say, do you believe in pan? Do you believe in um, satyrs, half human, half beast? People would say, no, I don't believe in that. And yet the Bible says that they're as real as you and I are. The Bible does not give us cunningly devised fables. It does not make things up. If God says the, it's like the unicorn, do unicorns exist? Yes. If God said they existed, if God said they're in the Bible, God doesn't make up fables. They existed. They just aren't the white horse type fairy tale unicorns that you would see now um, or in kids cartoons or whatever but they are real creatures both in the physical realm and in the spiritual realm as well uh, the satyr shall cry to his fellow the screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest there shall the great owl make her nest 
and, and lay and hatch and gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. In fact, I want to keep reading there. Because what's the best way if you find yourself in a situation where these devils are moving in? These satyrs, these dragons, these screech owls, these bitterns, these cormorants these evil spirits, when you find yourself in a place where these things are moving in, he says in verse 15, he mentions, there shall the vultures be gathered, everyone with her mate. Look at the very next verse. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded and his spirit it hath gathered them. And what God means by that is when he said none shall want her mate is that for everything that you read in the Bible, there's a double witness to it somewhere. Seek ye out here. Uh, Isaiah 28 says it's here a little and there a little line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept. And he said, you read a little bit of the Old Testament one day, read a little bit of the New Testament or read a little Old Testament and New Testament both in the same day or do what I do. You can, you can study the Bible however you want to. When I study it, I'm usually looking at a word or a phrase. And I look at that all through the Bible. Chase it down. Look at every place. Something catches my eye, I'll go to that place. And I'll look and see the verses before and after that. Just to get the context of it. That's normally how I study. But that's what he's telling you to do. When you find yourself in a place where the devils are moving in. And things are just, it just seems like you're under attack. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. He didn't say, hold it up like a crucifix and say, get away devils. He said, read it, read it. Devils cannot handle the presence of the word of God. That's why they moved in to begin with. Because more than likely the word of God wasn't there. So we've established this idea that yes, devils, spirits, ghosts, you can call them. No, I don't believe that Uncle Freddy's ghost can hang out in Uncle Freddy's old house. I do not believe that. Once a person dies... Their soul departs either to, nowadays, either to hellfire or to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, the Bible says. Okay, so that's what happens. Uncle Freddy's still not roaming around. So if you bring in uh, a medium, someone who says, I can contact Uncle Freddy and find out where he buried his money. It won't be Uncle Freddy. It'll be what's called a familiar spirit. A spirit that knew Uncle Freddy, is familiar with him, knows him. The spirit that showed up to Saul was not Samuel. It was a familiar spirit. It was one who appeared as Samuel, spoke as Samuel, but was not Samuel. So yes, they can have a habitation here. In the case of Saul, where did these devils come from? You remember what it said? What, when Saul asked the, the woman from Endor, Endora, what did you see? You remember what she said? I saw gods coming up out of the earth. These devils lived under the earth in caverns, caves, which is, I mentioned this earlier, certain of the old pagan cults, when they held their rituals, they would go into a pit or a cave deep underground. And they would gather there because that's where the spirits were gathered deep underground now turn to Ezekiel 28 this is Satan's seat he 
He had, I believe, I think he moves around. When we look in Revelation 2, we find him at Pergamos. That's where he dwelt. That's where his seat was. But here, the Bible calls him in Ezekiel 28, the prince of Tyrus. I believe he abode there at Tyre, Tyrus. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Um, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a, and then a capital G, God. Not just a regular spirit God with a little g. I am the big G. I'm the big God. But he's not. He's a counterfeit God. But he is appearing as the God that we worship. The God whose son is Jesus Christ. That's what he's attempting to do. He is attempting to deceive people into believing that he is the one true God. So when you hear people say, well, we all worship the same God, don't we? Oprah says that. She asked Joel Osteen, um, do you believe Jesus Christ is the only way to God? And he said, yes. But I believe there are many ways to Jesus. He's lying. I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. In the midst of the seas. Why did he say in the midst of the seas? Why did he say that? Look up on the screen. And then turn to Revelation 4. In Revelation 4, John said in verse 2, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And if you look at verse 6, And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So back in Ezekiel 28, and Solomon did this. Solomon this is a, a representation of Solomon's temple. And it's fairly factual. Um, when you study Solomon's temple in the Bible, literally Solomon wall to walled the inside of that temple with solid gold. Can you imagine the sight of that? Gold, number one, because it's very expensive, Number two, what is the, a property of gold that we know of? It doesn't tarnish. It's nearly incorruptible. Nothing really is incorruptible in this world, but it is nearly incorruptible. That's what it's supposed to represent. But he put literally a sea of glass in the most holy place and set the the ark of the covenant on top of that and uh it must have been an absolutely stunning stunning sight to see so when ezekiel back in ezekiel when he said i am a god i sit in the seat of god in the midst of the seas that's what he's saying i'm sitting in god's literal throne or that's where i want to sit i want that throne i want to possess it i want to own it i want everybody to think of me as god now i have a i have a theory on this if you look later on in ezekiel 28 it says in verse 14 thou art the anointed cherub that covereth we know that when God told Moses to build the Ark of the Covenant, he told him to put two cherubs on it and that their wings were to cover the, the seat 
the mercy seat. Their wings were to spread over and cover the mercy seat. So the idea that I have is that before Satan, before Lucifer falls, he was the anointed cherub whose job was to cover the seed of God. So what do we covet? We covet things we see. And I think Lucifer looked upon that throne, didn't like his job. I don't want to be the angel that covers the throne. I want to be the God who gets to sit on that throne. That's what I think, he's, that's what I think he coveted. That's what I think he desired. His pride got into him. So he says, I'm a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. The, and let me, let me back up a little bit. Where it says, yet thou art a man. Because that throws some people. So can this be talking about a spirit? Because it says, thou art a man. Did Satan ever actually possess a human being? Yeah. Judas Iscariot, who Jesus called the son of perdition. He actually fit, in fact, from the Bible, that's Judas is the only one that we know of that Satan himself ever inhabited. So he now and Judas are one. Though thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches. And, but we're gonna, we see later on in Ezekiel 28 that that wisdom got corrupted because of his pride and his beauty. And he said, with thy wisdom, verse 4, that thou hast gotten... And with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. One thing we know about Satan is that he loves money. He's corrupt. He loves riches. He is a spirit that desires human wealth. He's corrupt. So any spirit, any, any time a person seeks that out as their main objective, why they do what they do in order to get gain, then they have an evil spirit in them or with them, I'll say. Um... By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, thou hast increased thy, increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God. Let me keep reading that. Can't leave it all off. Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations. And they shall draw their swords against thy beauty of thy wisdom. They shall defile thy brightness. He's not going to be Lucifer for much longer. Turn to Isaiah 14. Look in verse 11. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, like stringed instruments, literally. The worm is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. Now remember that because I'm going to show you a picture of that in the Bible. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Here's what's interesting to me. Is that every, every other Bible has changed the name of Lucifer. They've taken it out and called him the morning star. 
The morning star. Who's the morning star? Jesus. And Jesus didn't fall from heaven. He didn't get kicked out. He left voluntarily. Descended down. And I can tell you that even the Satan worshipers know who Lucifer is. They know that Lucifer is Satan. But you have all the Bible correctors everywhere who are saying that is a poor translation. That is, that's not really a translation. That's not really the right one. What, is, what does Lucifer mean? Light bearer. Hang on to that. Turn over to 2 Corinthians 11. I'll show you that our King James translators were not wrong in that name. It means light bearer. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 14. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into a what? Angel of light. You know what the word angel means? Messenger. Carrier. Carrier of light. And that's what Lucifer means. That's a double witness. That that's his name, Lucifer. Okay? When um, Helena Blavatsky started, who, was it Blavatsky who started the publishing company called Lucifer Publishing? Elise Bailey. The Lucifer Publishing Company. Lucis, they changed it to Lucis Trust. And it's, its office is in the United Nations. Okay? The Lucifer Publishing Company. Can't get more obvious than that, can you? Anyway, here's what Lucifer said. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Meaning that his habitation is here. Down here. Number two, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. The stars of God are the angels. Hence, in Revelation 12, we see a fight breaks out. A war in heaven. And it's Satan fighting Michael and his angels. Why? Because Michael fights for God. And Michael says, you're not going to rule over these angels. I ain't letting it happen. But he wants to set his throne above the stars of God. He wants to rule over all of the angelic realm. Number three, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The congregation is us. Have you not ever felt that? Satan desiring to rule over you. Has that not ever happened to you? Where Satan was working on you, piling up on you, trying to devour you so he could rule over you. Can he, does Satan rule over churches? I mentioned in the Watchman broadcast that didn't get censored by YouTube. By the way, they still have my video taken down. And I didn't say anything wrong in that video. You watch it. If you haven't watched it, you watch it. I have not said anything wrong in that video. But anyway, they took it down. Um, oh, 1963. The enthronement ceremony of the fallen archangel Lucifer. Even the Satanists in the Vatican knew his name was Lucifer. But you see, they're the ones who were, I think, at least partially responsible for hiding that name. Because um, Carlos Martini, a Jesuit 
priest was put on the Greek New Testament committee of the United Bible Society, along with these German liberal scholars, put in there to make sure that the Vatican influence had its presence in the creation of the Greek New Testament. Was that the bell? I wasn't I, Don't ring the bell. I wasn't done. Uh, for that was, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Last word, seven words. I will be like the most high. In other words, I will be like God himself. People will worship me, but think that they're worshiping God. Um, ah, the bell rang. I've got more. I've got more on this. We'll wait. We'll hold off till next Sunday. But think about it. Think about the throne of your heart. Does Satan still want to rule over that? Does he want to rule over this church? You bet he does. He wants to rule over this. He wants to rule over all the churches in town. He wants to rule over your life. He wants to rule over your family, your heart, your marriage. He wants to rule over the country. <clears throat> That's what he wants. He's not going to stop until he's either put down or he holds that highest position. He's not going to stop. Neither can we. Father, bless your word. I pray, dear God, that you would speak to hearts who are open to your word, who want to be guided by your word and led by your word. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would bless your people this morning, those who still stand for your word and believe your word and trust only your word and not the things that they see in this world. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.